Hello everybody, this is Business 101. I am Mr. Fossil and today we'll be going over setting business aims and objectives. All businesses have aims and objectives. These give a business direction and provide a purpose to what the business does each day. A business aim is the overall long-term target or goal of the business, whereas the business objectives are the short-term steps a business needs to take to meet its overall aims. A business may have several different objectives that will help it to meet its aim. An example of a business aim is to make £120,000 in profit. An example of a business objective is to make £10,000 profit each, uh, each month for the next year. Business aims and objectives fall into two main categories, financial and non-financial. Financial aims and objectives. Financial aims and objectives are linked to money and cover. That's very important to remember. So financial um, is linked to money and cover. Business survival is a very common objective for a small business. Business survival refers to keeping the business operating for a certain amount of time. Most businesses initially aim to survive their first year. So business survival is all about just making sure the business does not collapse in on itself in a set period of time, okay? The next financial objective is profit maximization. This will become the aim of a business once it has reached its break-even point. And remember, the break-even point is the point in which your um, incoming money matches your outgoing money. So you have the same amount coming in as you do going out. That is the break-even point. Next is growth. Growth can refer to increasing the number of employees, the number of products sold, or income from sales. So there's many different things growth can refer to. Normally it specifies in the same sentence that mentions growth. Firms may aim to grow domestically, which is in the same country um, as the business originates from, or internationally, which means expanding to other countries. Market share refers to the percentage of the market that a business occupies. The market is the industry that a business operates in. For, uh, for example, the food, uh, the fast food industry. Okay, so again, market share refers to the percentage of the market that a business occupies. So, for example, you could say, um, this isn't the correct figure, but you could say Tesco has a forty percent market share in. Uh, the consumer retail market, okay? So that is an example. That is not correct, but that is just an example. So finally, for financial aims and objectives, we have increasing shareholder value. This is an important aim for a limited company, okay? So by increasing the value of these shares, they will keep their shareholders happy. So their shareholders are people that have invested into the business who get paid uh, in dividends when the business profits okay so by increasing shareholder value they are getting more money and therefore they will likely stay invested and prepare to invest further into your business which is the main reason why you'd want to keep them happy okay next you have non-financial aims and objectives non-financial aims and objectives are linked to anything other than making money for the business and are categorized as a social and ethical objectives uh, which are linked to doing things in an ethical or environmentally friendly manner or having a business whose sole purpose is to meet a social need. So for example, an entrepreneur may aim to provide only products that are sustainably sourced or use only solar uh, energy to power the business, okay? And B, customer satisfaction measures. Uh, how happy a customer is with the products or services provided by the firm. This is a key objective for firms in a competitive market. Okay, so those are non-financial aims and objectives. So what is the purpose of setting objectives? Why do businesses set these objectives? So businesses set aims and objectives to help with decision making. This allows businesses to decide what their main focus should be. Aims and objectives also show how key stakeholders, such as investors and employees, uh, the direction the business is planning to take okay so it helps inform others the direction you're trying to take your business so that uh you know those those other people can sort of work with what you're doing and get the right 
picture of how this business is trying to transform itself. This can make them more likely to support new projects. Employees may also be motivated by these goals, encouraging them to work harder to achieve them. So for example, if you have um, aims that are to provide um, you know, positive impacts for people in uh, society, for example, by being more environmentally friendly, which will be better off for people in the future and the planet, um, your employees may like that you're trying to do that. And then, as it says, work harder because they agree with the goals and aims uh, behind the business that they work for. Uh, aims and objectives also allow the business to set targets, which can then be used to measure progress. Okay, so these objectives are set to help a business to achieve its aims. Objectives are often set using the SMART rule. So SMART is an acronym, uh, meaning specific, measurable, agreed, realistic, and time bound. Okay, these are SMART objectives. So changing objectives. Why and how business aims and objectives change as businesses evolve? As a business evolves, it may change the aims and objectives it sets. When a business is small, it may focus its aims and objectives on achieving break even and survival. These are basic aims for a startup business. As a business gets larger, it may start to focus on becoming the dominant business in the market, international expansion, uh, increasing shareholder value and ethical and environmental considerations. As well as this, businesses may have to change their aims and objectives in response to external factors. So these external factors could be things such as uh, new government legislation. So new laws could impact on the costs of a business. So they may have to adapt their profit objectives. Uh, changes in the economy. So during a recession, a firm may choose to focus on survival rather than growth. Uh, whereas during a period of boom, expansion might become the main focus for the business. Changes in technology, this could include the business becoming more focused on new production methods, uh, e-commerce or m-commerce, um, or new payment systems such as contact payment. And finally, changes in environmental and ethical standards. So as customers become more concerned uh, with their impact on the environment, businesses may set environmental and ethical objectives to avoid losing customers. Use of objectives in judging success. After a business has set its objectives, it can review them to see how successful they have been. So for example, if a business set an objective to increase market share by 5% within 12 months, after 12 months, they are able to see if this has been achieved. Uh, businesses could judge their success in a number of ways, depending on their objectives and uh, that have been set, uh, including uh, the number of employees they may have, customer satisfaction, market share, social media followers or uh, online engagement, revenue, cost savings, profit, number of new stores open, share value, environmental impact. There's many, many ways to judge success uh, from objectives, many, many different ways. Um, and with that, that is uh, today's lesson over. I hope everybody learned um, about our objectives and aims in business. Um, if not, please do put any questions you may have down in the comment sections. Please do subscribe to the channel and like the video if you learned something. I've been Business 101, Mr. Fussell. We will see you in next uh, week's episode. Goodbye.